Okay, so I'm gonna get straight into this, all right? Got my hi-hat, kick, snare. What I see normally people do is that they double kick right here. Just one thought is that you can actually create a pad that contains a double kick. Let's go to the program, and in this case, you can flatten the pad, but you can also you can also get two layers working here, and then with the offset, you can adjust the the swing that you like for the double kick. Now I'm not a finger drummer, I'm just looking at this to find the most efficient and most practical way of finger drumming. So I'm not a finger drummer, so I'm looking at the perspective as a producer, uh, knowing all the tricks that I know uh, working with the MPC, what could actually help finger drummers to uh, enhance their workflow as, as finger drummers. Now what I see a lot of the time is people use two fingers to trigger the sound, like if you're hitting on the hi-hat, and then you want to hit another pad that contains a sample. You normally you you use your two fingers to do this. Well, you can use simultaneous play for that. In this case, I have this sample right here, and I'm using simultaneous play to trigger my hi hat. Right, so you can go. So you don't need to be using two fingers. You can just go and use one finger to trigger the sample and that sample will have a simultaneous play action that will trigger uh, the hi-hat in this case, or you can use it to trigger the kick. You can use simultaneous play, or you can also use the layer function to have the sample plus the kick. But the whole idea is to actually have a pad that can trigger two sounds or three sounds at the same time, so you don't need to use three fingers. In this case, I can just, instead of having two fingers hit on the kick and the sample, I can just hit the sample. Notice I have the same sample on all four, uh, all four layers, and the last uh, layer here has it's pitched up by two semitones, which means that instead of having the same sample on another pad, you're actually putting everything into one pad with a hi hat and two uh, in the same sample, but with a different pitch. So. So this allows you to have more variety with the same sample. You just go into the LFO modulation, put that to cycle, right right there. Normally it's set to velocity, but if you put it to cycle, the sample is going to cycle. So first one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you see these pads, they all have sounds in it, and they're all set to mute group one. So they're all muting each other, okay? I have my sample at the top on the first layer, then I have three empty sound. What, what this is, is just a sample that has nothing in it, so it's just something to, to fill in. So that's the first layer. Then you go to a second layer, empty, 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 back to the first one. Okay, so I'm cycling between these four sounds, but uh, basically this sound right here I'm using, it's, it's an empty sound that has nothing in it. This is the sample, so it's just, it has absolutely nothing inside. Okay. And here we go. When you hit it on the fourth time, it plays the sample. And now going back to this pad right here, okay, back to the master here, simultaneous play. Now this pad has a sample inside it and it's triggering via simultaneous play uh, the hi-hat and it's also triggering this new pad that we have here, A13, which contains that cycling uh, feature. So it allows us to have uh, a deeper and uh, more sounds coming into play on the fourth hit. 
So, and we're basically just still just using uh, a very basic uh, workflow here with our fingers without having to be everywhere in the pad area. And also to uh, to give you a different perspective of things here, you could have this sound that we just created on another section, on, on another pad bank. So let's copy this pad and put it right here maybe on pad bank uh, number B. Do it, okay. Now let's go back here. We're gonna clear this pad, we don't need it. Sample assign, clear the pad. So the pad is empty. Let's go back to program, edit. Now, instead of saying that we want to trigger pad uh, A13, I'm going to say that we want to trigger pad B13. Okay, so this pad is out of the picture because we're using pad bank A, but we can still trigger the pad that's on pad bank B just by using that feature, which again, it's a, it gives you some more real estate here that you can put other sounds to work with and you have other sounds in other pad banks that uh, you can still use by using the simultaneous play feature. So in this case, there you go, you're triggering a sound that's on another, another pad bank. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use uh, cycling for my hi-hats. So let's go here to the cycling. I already have uh, another sound here. That's an open hi-hat. And what I'm using here is actually random. So once you create more, uh, more layers, you'll have less probabilities for it to trigger. So, you know, it really depends on what you want to have. This is another thing that I find interesting that might also work for you guys is so I'm going to take these out. Okay, I'm just going to use these two right here. Modulation velocity. Okay, so you have two hits coming out. Obviously, you can you can uh, dial in the amount of offset that you want. You can go higher here on the number as well. You can put more hi-hats, maybe create something even harder to play. Change the levels. So just kind of showing that you can do a lot with cycling uh, the samples right here with a simultaneous play as well. Okay, so now that we created this sound, we can flatten the pad. So we flatten the pad, do it. And now we have that sound that we created in just one layer. I'm gonna put the, the uh, original hi-hat on the other layers, LFO modulation, cycle. So we have that variation. We can also put it to random. the loop function uh, I have recorded uh, just the kick here on a one bar loop so I'm at a sequence it's a one bar 90 BPM that's important 90, 90 BPM and I just recorded the kick okay okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and bounce this all right 
So let's go here and say that I want to bounce this to a sample, right? Bounce. All right, cool. So I'm going to transpose that, put that on pad A4. Okay, cool. Do the same thing, bounce. Okay. I also want the hi-hat. Okay, and I'm going to bounce this, bounce the sample. Okay, perfect. We've bounced that, the kick, the hi-hats and the snares. So I have my hi-hats, kicks, snares. I'm placing the snare, the snare loop on this pad right here. Okay, the kicks here, right above the kick and the hi-hat right there. Okay, so let's go into the program edit and let's see what I did with it with the uh, with the pads, all right? So, so put the pad on to note on, okay? Go to the filter section and open up the release, otherwise it will sound like a note on function. So you have to open up the release so it plays, it keeps on playing, all right? And also go to the sample screen and turn the pad to loop forward, just like that. So this way, it keeps the, the loop playing and playing and it doesn't stop. It fades out eventually, but it gives it more time. Also, so this is for all the pads. I did this for the kick as well in the snare. Uh, now the kick here, this pad, I actually use the mute target to mute that pad once I come back to my basic pads. The snares is going to mute pad A12. Hi-hat is going to mute pad A9. kind of releases you from that duty of being on the drums all the time, which I think, you know, you can finger drum. I think sometimes people overrate the, the ability of finger drumming and you can have other cool things that you can do on the pads besides just being, uh, putting your fingers on the drums, which is cool, but you know, there are other things that you can also do. I hope that this last one made sense for you and see how I'm actually uh, creating the workflow here. I don't know if this, I don't know if any of this is going to be useful. I don't know if you find this to be something that is cheating or something like that. But uh, what I wanted to um, to show you is these functionalities that are super cool and are super useful for finger drummers. And I, I see some people use it now and again, but you know, there's a lot of creativity there to be uh, to be worked on. And I'm not a finger drummer, but I wanted to show this anyway. So you guys maybe uh, maybe find some utility for all these functions. Okay, guys, thank you very much. I hope you're going to have a wonderful New Year's Eve. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.